This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a new old project. If you have been following me for a long time, this PCB might be familiar to you, because I showed something very similar about two years ago. However, this time things are a bit different. I found multiple ways for improving the circuit and the PCB, so I implemented them in this new design. As you can see it on the text on the PCB, this is a miniature PCB for the TCD1304 linear CCD. The PCB, apart from the CCD itself, contains very few parts. Four resistors, three capacitors, a voltage reference chip and an op-amp chip. As usual, I made the traces curved, so the electrons don't have to take sudden turns and experience high G loads. Just kidding. I just found it aesthetically pleasing. One of the big changes is that instead of the previous 8-pin connector, the circuit only uses 6. I found a neat trick to get rid of 2 pins. At the other side of the PCB, I just placed my signature with the year of the design, plus the short name of the PCB. I also added two M2.5 holes to the PCB, so it can be mounted on a surface. This will play a crucial role in one of my upcoming projects, by the way. For those who haven't seen my previous videos on this topic, the purpose of the circuit is to drive this nice linear CCD. This type of CCD can be found in scanners, detectors, distance meters, barcode scanners, and so on. So if you are creative, there are many more applications for this device. The CCD has a single row of pixels. More precisely, it has 3648 pixels, which are 8 micrometers wide and 200 micrometers long. It is relatively easy to drive this TCD. It only requires three driving signals and a relatively fast ADC. A medium tier STM32 microcontroller, such as the blue pill or the black pill, can easily perform this task. I actually made a firmware for both microcontrollers that I mentioned. To see this PCB in action, I first need to assemble the board, obviously, so let me show you how I did it. As usual, I got this PCB manufactured by PCBWay. If you want to get this board or your own custom PCB manufactured, go to PCBWay's website and use their services. In addition to PCB related services, they also offer 3D printing, machining and other services, so you can get all your things manufactured at one vendor. Check the link in the description and visit their website. So back to the board, as we can see the flux left a bit residue on the surface. I did not try to wash it off so I can show it to you. Maybe one of the disadvantages of using a matte black PCB is that the flux seeps into its surface and creates this shiny residue that you can see. This would not bother me usually, but perhaps in this application it is a bit undesired because I want to avoid anything that reflects light. Since I have to solder the wires on the other side, this might cause issues. Perhaps a rosin-free solder would be better next time, or I should just uh, simply try to clean it. Alternatively, I could have added a 6-pin JST SH connector, but then the connector and the wiring would make it more difficult to reproduce my PCB. So as you can see, I just went with regular 30 AWG wires directly soldered in those holes. The other end of the wires receive a jumper pin connector, because I will plug everything into a breadboard for this demonstration. I tried to carefully solder the wires in place, to create a relatively flat solder joint. I will probably put black tape over the joints, 
once I put the board into the device that I'm building. The tape sticks better to a flat surface, obviously, so that's why I aimed for a flat solder joint. As you can see, we are almost done. The only thing left is to insert the CCD into the socket. If you look closely, I used a more professional socket for this circuit board. These are called pre-C-dip headers and they are machined to precise dimensions. They are just simply better than the traditional headers and I think the CCD deserves a solid connector. Now when the board is placed next to its previous version, the size difference becomes more obvious, but the width and the length of the board got smaller. Furthermore, I got rid of two unnecessary wires and I also replaced the 0805 passives with 0603 ones. The way I got to get rid of those two wires is that I figured out that I could actually use the voltage reference as the power supply for both the op-amp and the CCD. So the extra 3 volt line I previously used became unnecessary and since I used an extra ground pin just to have an even number of pins because 7 pin connector looks a little bit silly I also removed that extra ground connection. As you will see it in the test results the signal looks good so probably I did not make too big mistake. I made sure of course that the voltage reference can source enough current for the CCD and the op-amp so everything should be fine. And uh, now as the board is done let's see it in action. So before proceeding with the demonstration I just want to tell you that the firmware which uh, drives and uh, reads the linear CCD is written in the STM32 cube ID uh, environment. That is what you see on the screen. And I have a very detailed video and also an article where I explain how I wrote the firmware and how you can write it. So please check the link in the description. There is a link to my old article and then you can put together your own firmware in order to drive the CCD. And in addition to the firmware, I also have a desktop software, which I also developed myself specifically for this CCD. And uh, this is the software that captures the data, which is coming from the uh, USB, which is connected to the microcontroller. And then it visualizes uh, the pixels. And I also showed this software a few times because I made my own spectrometer and the core component of that spectrometer is this uh, CCD which I am showing you in this video. And therefore if you look at the display and see that there are some calibration parameters and wavelengths and similar parameters uh, scattered around the UI, that is because I can use this uh, specific software for many different uh, purposes. And one of the purposes is to operate the software as a spectrometer software. But in this demonstration, we will actually just uh, show the raw signal of the CCD. So I just captured the output of the CCD with the AD converter on the uh, STM32 microcontroller and send it to this software. And then you can see the small uh, demonstration setup. So we have the microcontroller. I have the wires uh, which are connected to the driver board for the CCD. And then actually I 3D printed a small frame as you can see uh, for the uh, CCD driver board so I can uh, place it on surfaces without uh, worrying about shorting the uh, cables or the connections and uh, so on. And uh, we already connected everything to the computer so a simple USB port connected to the uh, STM32 F401 CCU6 microcontroller a very powerful microcontroller and uh, relatively cheap so I really recommend it. And uh, basically this will be the thing that receives the signal. So I just put uh, this here. So you can see everything uh, simultaneously, hopefully. So first I just uh, connect to the uh, corresponding COM port. And then what I can do is that I can further increase this size so you can see a bit more details. Something like this. And then I just uh, select one of the uh, predefined uh, integration times. Uh, let's say 66 uh, microseconds is enough. So this is basically the shutter speed uh, of the CCD. And then I just start reading. And that's that. So we have an almost uh, saturated signal, if you can see. And we have a few uh, funny pixels. Uh, as you can see, there is one pixel here, uh, around 1300 uh, pixel, uh, because that's 
like a bit uh, outlier. And then uh, at 3100, we also have another outlier. But uh, yeah, it's fine. So as I said, the light comes from the top uh, side of the picture, which uh, records the uh, CCD. So I try to block that light a bit. And you can see that now the overall brightness or the signal uh, falls down. I will try to rearrange the camera a little bit. Uh, something like this. Hopefully you will still see some details. But uh, let's uh, make the most uh, simple demonstration. I just blocked the center of the CCD. And you can see that uh, obviously uh, because of the way the light comes, uh, my finger casts uh, a shadow. So you can see that uh, the signal is not symmetrical. And you can see that if I move my finger around, then I block different parts of the linear CCD. So therefore the signal will be different. And uh, actually the output of the CCD is opposite. As you can see here, I inverted it with the op-amp because uh, when you block the CCD, then the signal uh, should become actually higher. So you have a low signal uh, by default when you uh, when you expose a lot of uh, light on the surface of the CCD and when you block uh, uh, the uh, light, then uh, the signal should go up. But here is the opposite. When I block the light, uh, the signal goes down, which for me or for the, let's say, human logic, it makes more sense. Uh, less light, less signal. And then uh, I have some periodic patterns here. And uh, for example, I can have a simple a jumper header which is like this and I will try to put this on the CCD so we can see that we can create some pattern there we go so this is now the uh, shadow of the yeah 2.54 millimeter uh, pin header I think it looks uh, quite uh, cool and it's very interesting that we can pick up this uh, pattern actually we could kind of estimate the width because of the width of the peaks or the valleys, uh, but uh, maybe I won't do it right now. But uh, we know the width of the uh, pixels. One pixel is eight uh, micrometers wide. And then we can see how many uh, pixels we have between two valleys, for example, here and here. So it's just uh, simple math. So I remove this. And then I can put the other stuff uh, over this, of course. I have this microcontroller, which also has some uh, holes and stuff. So if I could find the way of uh, putting them, putting the hole uh, on the correct way, then I could make a periodic pattern. And there you can kind of see the, uh, the peaks where the hole uh, lets the light through. Uh, I'm holding the PCB with left hand and I'm not left handed, so it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but you can see what, uh, what you're supposed to see. So the holes are there. And with just a simple wire, of course, you can again uh, block out the light. So you can see, and uh, this is like nearly real time. I'm not even running the CCD at its max uh, frames per second. So it could be even faster, but uh, I mean, you don't need really faster than this, I think. You can actually see on the display uh, down here, the received uh, amount of frames. So it's not even like a big uh, amount of frames per second, just a few frames, but it's uh, good enough. You can see how, how the wire is uh, synced with the uh, signal. And you can see that it's good enough. And yes, uh, basically this is what I wanted to show you here, that I made a smaller uh, PCB and uh, it works as it should and it's improved as compared to its uh, previous version. So everything is very good. And uh, this is a very important uh, milestone because I have several projects lined up with this uh, CCD. So Stay tuned for them because I think they will be very interesting and uh, they might be very useful as well. Uh, we will see if you will find it useful. 
But uh, yeah, that's all. So I just want to remind you that I have a website and I always put an article on my website related to each uh, videos. So this video also has an article. So go to my website and uh, check the article because there are some extra resources there usually, like uh, links to these products, uh, pictures of these devices and some extra information in the article and so on. So it is worth a visit. And also don't forget to visit my PCBWay project page because, for example, uh, this uh, PCB is there. I share the PCB and then uh, you can buy it directly, either with or without assembly. It's up to you. But uh, yeah, you can buy it. So don't forget to visit uh, PCBWay's website and my project page. And finally, I have a YouTube channel membership. So please consider joining uh, the membership because uh, the support can help me to buy these gadgets and uh, produce more uh, useful videos. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.